In this video I'm going to take a look at the position function, the velocity function, and the acceleration function. These are usually introduced pretty early into a Calc 1 class right after you've learned how to take a derivative. Uh, specifically you've taken the derivative of using power rule and your polynomial functions. So then they start throwing in some of these questions. Alright, the first thing you need to know is the relationship between these functions and derivatives. Okay, your position functions usually denoted by um, S of T. All right. Whenever you take the derivative of the position of something, then you automatically get the velocity. All right. If you've got, if you're given the velocity function, all right, which is usually denoted with V of t, when you take the derivative of the velocity of something, then you get the acceleration function. All right. So early on, um, they introduced just this topic to you. Um, in a calculus class because you've learned how to do that derivative. So they're going to give you really simple questions that involve maybe the position function and they ask you about velocity so you've got to take the derivative. Or maybe they give you the position function and they ask you a question about acceleration of which you'd have to take the derivative twice. Okay, so we're going to do just two real simple examples uh, where we implement some of this idea here. Alright, so for our first question here it says, at time t equals zero, a diver jumps from a diving board that is 32 feet above the water. The position of the di diver is given by s of t equals negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 32. s is measured in feet, t is measured in seconds. Okay, they might set this up as a two-part question. Okay, when does the diver hit the ground and what is the diver's velocity at impact? All right, now just because you are in calculus class and you start doing problems, you don't always want to assume that every problem has to use calculus. All right, because if we're thinking about this, we've got somebody 32 feet above the ground. All right, this, this function right here is going to give them their position. All right, as they jump off that diving board at time t equals zero and the question just says when does the diver hit the ground all right this has really absolute this quest part has absolutely nothing to do with calculus i just want to know this is an upside down parabola right think about standing up here and jumping down off of it when is it going to hit the the ground well in other words when is this equation set equal to zero what does t equal all right because when when does it happen so this one does not require any calculus whatsoever i'm just going to do a negative 16 t squared plus 16 t plus 32 set that equal to zero and solve for t okay so it's got a leading negative coefficient there i don't want to have to deal with that when i try to factor this so i'm going to factor out my greatest common factor and i'm going to make sure it's a negative so i'm going to pull out negative 16 that's going to leave me with a t squared minus a t minus 2. Alright, now I'm going to take this trinomial in the inside and I'm going to factor it. So, we'll set it up for some factoring here. A t and a t. And two things that multiply together to be negative 2 and add to be negative 1 would have to be a negative 2 and a plus 1. Alright, so setting this equal to 0, I would get a possible answer of time equals t equals negative 1, or time equaling 2. All right, so we stop, take a look at that. Obviously, time can't be negative, so then it's going to be after 2 seconds, the diver would hit the ground. Okay, and there again, no calculus needed to do that. Now, this one, what is the diver's velocity at impact? All right, well, we know impact occurs 2 seconds after he jumps. All right, and this is the position function. All right, and going back and recalling that if you have the position function and you take the derivative, you get the velocity function. So that's the first thing we need to do. So I'm going to rewrite here. Let's uh, go ahead and write that equation. So s of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 32. All right, now if I take the derivative of that, that's going to give me v of t. All right, so let's go through real quickly and take the derivative there. That's going to be a negative 32t, and that'll be a plus 16, and then that goes away. So my velocity function then is going to be this. I want to know what the velocity is at impact, which would be time equaling 2, 2 seconds after it hits the ground. So now I need to plug in 2 into that equation. All right, so v of t 
2 is going to be a negative 32 times 2 plus 16. I think that's going to be a negative 64 plus 16, so negative 48. All right, it is velocity. Everything's being measured in feet per second here, so feet per second. All right, so um, just be careful when you're doing these questions. Some may not involve any calculus whatsoever, and then others are going to involve that simple derivative. Okay, all right, let's take a look at another example. Okay, let's say a particle is moving along um, a straight line in such a way that its position at time t is given by the equation s of t equals 5t to the third minus 30 t squared, where again, s is going to be measured in feet, t is measured in seconds. Find the acceleration after 4 seconds. All right, so find the acceleration. So it's asking for acceleration. All right, and so again, remembering that relationship, let's pull it back out here and look at it again. If I've got the position function, I take the derivative once, I get velocity. I take the derivative a second time, I get acceleration. And this question is asking for acceleration. So I'm going to take that original position function, s of t equals 5t to the third minus 30t squared. All right, I am going to take the derivative, and when I do that the first time, it's going to give me the velocity. All right, so taking the derivative there is going to be a 15t squared, and then a minus 60t. All right, now this is my velocity function. All right, now if I take the derivative a second time from this original one, okay, so that would be the second derivative of the position function, or the first derivative of that velocity function, which is all the same thing, it's going to ultimately give me my acceleration function. Okay, so taking the derivative again here is going to be a 30t and then minus 60. All right, now again, find the acceleration after four seconds. All right, that's time, so it's a matter of just plugging four seconds in there. So a of four is equal to 30 times 4 minus 60. That's going to be 120 minus 60. So I'm going to have 60. All right, now acceleration. Hopefully you remember I've done this twice. This is going to be feet per second squared because it's acceleration. Okay, so feet per second squared. All right, so um, just a couple examples there trying to um, just go back over the, the relationship between the position function, the velocity function, and the acceleration function. All right. Um, and it, like I said, this is usually just some really simple questions that they will throw in early into a Calc 1 class right after you've learned how to take the derivative. Uh, definitely thanks for watching and be sure and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.